ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم اما بعد الحمد لله رب العالمين الله بلسز ون انذر داي فور تعليم ان تعليم از ابليكيشن اوف نوليدج اور سترايف تو اكواير نوليدج and alhamdulillah rabbil alamin as muslimin as those that are muslims alhamdulillah rabbil alamin were told by the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that it's imperative it is mandatory that we gain knowledge with regards to that knowledge what knowledge should we strive to obtain the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said with regards to knowledge the best knowledge that we strive to acquire is the knowledge that will save us from the save us from the hell fire the knowledge that will make our path to paradise easy and save us from the hell fire they asked the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with the boss who what is that knowledge he said knowledge of allah wa rasuluhu meaning knowledge of the quran and the sunnah of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so alhamdulillah rabbil alamin that's what we're striving to do and allah gave us another opportunity to acquire this knowledge fulfill our obligation and at the same time while striving to acquire knowledge The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said we have multiple opportunities. Number 1, forgiveness of all of our sins. So we understand that acquiring knowledge is not a frivolous thing. It's not a light matter. If you partake in it with the right intent, then inshallah we're forgiven of all of our sins. Another opportunity is that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the whole time that we're striving to acquire knowledge, you're like a mujahid on the battlefield. So you're like a soldier in the cause of Allah on the battlefield. One of the Maliki scholars, one of the African Maliki scholars said that the mujahid or the soldier on the battlefield is not just the one on the battlefield, but the soldier or the mujahid is the scholar or one that strives to acquire knowledge. Because the scholar or the one that has knowledge knows that he's supposed to be on the battlefield. So I understand that a soldier not just one against knowledge right the soldier is not just the one that's on the battlefield but the soldier is also the scholar or the one that acquires knowledge because that knowledge is going to put you on the battlefield inshallah so alhamdulillah rabbil alamin striving to continue with this knowledge with the gods to the story or the series of musa alayhi salam we're on the subject matter of kidr and again we're told that kidr means green This is one of the colors in the descriptions, the sifat. So kither means green. We're also told in the tafsir, with regards to kither, he was called kither because wherever he sat down, the place that he sat down, of the place of vegetation, it would turn white, then it would turn green. Wherever kither sat down, it would turn white first, and then it would turn green. So this is why he was called kither. There's a discrepancy with the gods to whether he was a prophet or whether he wasn't a prophet. There's two type of um, uh, uh, consensus on that. Some say that he was a prophet because the law called him his ibad. Then some say because in the, in the ayat it said he was commanded to do this by Allah. But some say the majority of the consensus say that he wasn't a prophet. Allah wa Allah. But he was somebody that we know for sure that had hikmah. He had wisdom and he had knowledge. Okay, and we understood that the story of Kidder, the reason why the story of Kidder came about, was because Musa and Salam, they asked him one day when he was giving a khutbah, who's the most knowledgeable person in the world, or is there anybody more knowledgeable than you on the earth? And Musa and Salam said, no, there's nobody more knowledgeable than me. And he thought because he was blessed with the Torah, he thought because he was blessed with the miracles. He thought because he was, you know, he had a communication with Allah subhanahu wa taala that nobody had more knowledge than him. But Allah subhanahu wa taala reprimanded him and said, "No, there is somebody more knowledgeable than you." So Musa al Salam, he said, "Well, where is this man? How can I meet him?" And this is how the story of Musa al Salam and Kinder came about. But what we learn from this story is that all knowledge comes from Allah subhanahu wa taala. We may think that we have knowledge. But at the end of the day, we only have knowledge if Allah subhanahu wa taala bestows us with that knowledge. Allah says in the Quran, "I have the mercy 
There is no knowledge that you can encompass or grasp except by the will of Allah. All knowledge by the will of Allah. You can read a thousand books. You can watch a bunch of videos. But if Allah doesn't want you to acquire the knowledge with regard to those books or those videos or that information, you might be a those that don't acquire nothing. Okay? So understand that knowledge is from Allah. So we make dua to Allah that he blesses us with knowledge. Not just knowledge, but beneficial knowledge. Knowledge that will be beneficial for our nafs, for our akira. Okay? And we learn that in Surah Al-Taha, chapter 20 of the Quran, that there's a certain dua that we make with regards to knowledge. We say, Rabbi Zidani Ilma. My Lord, increase me in knowledge. My Lord, increase me in knowledge. Make this deen easy for me. Inshallah. Amin. Okay? So we go to the story of Kidr. When Musa and Salam asked to meet Kidr, or where is this man that has more knowledgeable than me? Allah said that take a fish. Allah told Musa and Salam take a fish, put it in the basket, put it in the vessel, right, with salt water. And when this fish departs, when you come to the meeting of the two seas, and when this fish departs, this is where you'll meet this man. Okay? So we talked about the story with regards to Musa and Islam. Allah says, and he took a journey with the young boy servant. And we're told that that boy servant was who? What was the boy Joshua. servant? Who? Joshua. Joshua. Okay? That same Joshua that we talked about when Musa and Islam, they were trying to go into Palestine, or Allah commanded them to go fight jihad. It was Joshua and Caleb that they said, let's go up in there, right? It doesn't matter how many they are. It doesn't matter how big they are. Why we go in there with Bismillah, with Tawakul of Allah, trust in Allah, will be victorious. That was Joshua. We're also told that at the end of the 40 years, it was Joshua that went into Palestine, okay? So Joshua had a very uh, important part. He played a very important part but Musa alayhi salam, he was always there with Musa alayhi salam, right? We're also told that he was walking with Musa alayhi salam with the boss too looking for Kidr. Okay, alhamdulillah, right? So they told him that they're on this journey, right? They started this path, and Musa alayhi salam said it doesn't matter if it takes 70 years, 80 years. Doesn't matter if it takes a lifetime. I'm going to keep looking for this man even if it takes a lifetime, right? Putting emphasis on the striving to acquire knowledge. Now Musa alayhi salam, he already had knowledge. He had knowledge of the Torah, he had instructions, he spoke directly to Allah, he had the miracles, right? But yet, he understood that there was somebody that had more knowledge than him, so thus he said he would go all out of his way for years to go to acquire that knowledge. Okay, that should give us inspiration with regards to us. We don't even have that much knowledge. Right? But Musa alayhi salam was understanding that somebody had more knowledge than him. He was willing to go out of his way and travel for years to acquire that knowledge. Okay? So understand, we can never be too big, have too much knowledge to go seek that knowledge. And even if it takes a, a long time to acquire that knowledge, like in the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in the time of the Sahabas, the Tabi'een, or even the four Imams, they used to travel all over the world. Right? They would travel all over the world to go find one hadith. Go find somebody that had a hadith that other people didn't have. They would travel for days, for months, maybe even a year, just to acquire that knowledge. So I hope you love what I mean. Maybe you learn from that lesson as well. So we're told that Musa and Salam and Joshua, they started walking. And they came to a place. But they didn't understand that this was the place yet. They came to a place and they got tired. Right? And they took a nap. They went to sleep. And when they went to sleep, we're told that at the place, there was a spring of life. There was a spring. It was called the spring of life. Eidol Hayat. The spring of life. And that at this place, some of the drops of the spring touched the fish. How they touched the fish? Allah Allah. But we're told that some of the water from the spring of life touched the fish and the fish became alive, jumped out of the basket, right? Jumped out of the vessel, 
right? It went into the water and started swimming to the point that it looked like a tunnel. And we're told that the water on the side of the fish, right, they were held up and it looked like it was a straight tunnel. And it said that he flew or he swam through the, through the river or through the ocean in amazement. It was a miracle from Allah's book of Allah. Even though Joshua, he seen this. We're told that Joshua seen this, but he forgot to tell Musa al -Islam about what happened. So we're told the next morning when they woke up, Musa al -Islam said, man, we're exhausted, we're hungry. Joshua, go get that food for us. Right, we're hungry, go get that morning breakfast. Right, Joshua said, oh, remember when we was over there, we was laying down, the fish jumped out and went into the water and started swimming in, in amazement. So Musa al -Islam said, but for, before that, Joshua said, it was only Shaitan that made me forget to tell you. Right? So even though he seen it, he saw it, he knew this is what they was looking for, but for whatever reason, he didn't tell Musa al -Islam. He said it was Shaitan that made me forget. So Musa al -Islam said, that's what we've been looking for. That's what we've been looking for. And he said that they retraced their steps. So they went back to that spot where they had laid their head and they found Kibbutz. Right? They found Kidron. We're told to the top seer, it said that they found him. He had a hood over his head. Okay? His head, his face was covered with a hood. And so Musa and Salam said, you know, I'm Musa. He introduced himself to, to Kidron. He said, I'm Musa. Right? And Kidron said, are you Musa of Bani Israel? Are you another type of Musa? Right? He said, no, I'm Musa from Bani Israel. And he said, well, I'm here to, t to teach you something from other knowledges that you don't have. So we're told that Musa al Salam asked the permission, may I travel with you, may I walk with you to obtain some knowledge that you have that I don't have. And remember we learned in the top seer that this is the proper etiquette when you strive to learn from somebody or acquire knowledge from somebody. You want somebody to teach you. You're talking to an imam, a sheikh, right? A scholar, you want him to teach you. There's a certain uh, etiquette, adab, mannerism, in asking him, you ask permission, can I sit with you, right? Can I have your permission to learn from you? Can I walk with you, right? Can I talk with you? Alhamdulillah, I So we're told that Kinder said, Kinder said, yes, you can follow me under the prerequisites that you don't ask me nothing, right? He said, because I believe that you will never, and he used the word lan, right? And this is very important, lan. Lun means never, right? He didn't say, I don't think, he said never, Lun. Never will you be able to be patient with what it is that you're going to see with me, right? Never will you be patient with the things that I'm going to do, right? So therefore, you know, I don't think you will, right? Musa al Salam said, man, I will obey anything that you ask of me. And I won't ask you any questions. That'll be prere the prerequisite. Let me walk with you. Let me go with you. Even though that you think that I won't have any patience. Even though Musa al Salam said, Inshallah, Inshallah, I'll be patient with you. I'll listen to you. And I'll follow anything that you tell me to do. Right? Even though he said that, he still wasn't able to be patient, as we'll see. So, Kinder said, okay, with the guys... Over the prerequisite, don't ask me nothing until I tell you what it is that I'm doing. Okay? So Musa al Salam, right, agreed to that predicament, agreed to them circumstances. So we're told that the first thing that happened was they started off on this journey. And the first thing that happened was they came to a boat. Right? Allah said that they came to a boat. Right? And we're told that the top seer that when they came to this boat, the people of the boat, they recognized Kidder, and thus they let him on the boat for free. Right? They got on the boat for free. For Musa, Musa al Islam was like, man, can they let us on the boat for free? We didn't have to pay nothing. But once they got on the boat, Kidder took one of the boards of the boat, one of the planks of the boat, and made a hole in the boat. Right? To the point that there was water, you know what I'm saying, flowing into the boat. So Musa said, man, what, did you do something? 
Did you damage the boat to the point that the people will drown? Are you trying to drown the people? Because you just, you know, you damaged the boat. When you damage the boat, water's going to come in the boat, they're going to drown. Is that what you're intending? To drown the people. So Musa al salam, remember he said he wasn't going to ask any questions. So Kinder said, man, didn't I tell you? Didn't I say that you weren't going to be able to bear what it is that you see with me? And we're told that the first thing that Musa al salam said was, oh, I forgot. I forgot. You know what I'm saying? Please don't hold me to account because I forgot. Right? Kinda said, all right, but don't ask me no more questions. Okay? So we're told that was one of the first incidents. Right? So we gave him an excuse. Oh, you forgot? Okay, but don't ask me no more questions. Right? So then he said they continued on their journey. The next thing that happened was they came to a group of boys. Right? They came to a group of boys and were told that Kither, when they found these boys playing, he singled out one of the boys. We're told that he was very handsome, one of the finest of the boys. And then Kither singled him out and pulled his head off, killed him. Right? We're told that the top seer, he said he plucked his head off like plucking fruit. Right? Like grapes or whatever, plucking fruit. Popped his head off, killed him. Okay? However, he took his head off. Whether he cut his head off or pulled his head off, Allah Allah said that he plucked his head off. Okay? So he killed the boy. Right? Without telling Musa alayhi salam nothing. Again, what did Musa alayhi salam say? Man, what did you do? Man, you just killed somebody without do right? And remember, in Islam, you cannot kill nobody except for a just cause. Right? Murder for murder, life for life. Right? Certain... Uh, who does in the, in the Sharia that, that require death, stoning, stuff like that. So he said, did you kill somebody without just do? Man, you did something that was munkar. This is something that's great. This is one of the Kabah ears. This is evil. So what did Kibber say? He said, didn't I tell you that you won't be able to withstand what it is that you see from me? You can't do it. So Musa and Islam said, all right, yeah, you're right, my bad. He said, if I ask you anything else after this, man, if you make me leave, you know what I'm saying, your companionship. My bad, you right. Here's my excuse. This is my first excuse. The first time I forgot. Now this time, man, I was out of my element, and if I ask you any more questions, then, man, you can make me leave your companionship. Right? So he made this prerequisite upon himself. And later on, we find out that this prerequisite that he made was the reason why we didn't learn no more from the story, inshallah, like we'll see. So we're told that they continued on their journey. Kidr and Musa alayhi salam, and they came across the town. And when they came across the town, right, they're traveling, they came across this town, and they asked the people for food, water, or shelter. And the people told them, no. Now we must understand that part of the etiquette of Muslims, that we that we owe the traveler three days. If somebody's traveling from another city, they come to the town. They're from another town, right? They come to a masjid. They come to, to the brothers that have authority. They say, man, I'm traveling, right? I need a place to stay. It is the responsibility of the masjid, those in authority, those that are in a position to do so, to lodge them and to take care of them for three days. That's the etiquette of a Muslim. And again, this is just a dicker because this is one of the sunnahs that we may have lost. Some of the masjids, people come to the masjid, they don't let you stay in the masjid, right? They don't care about where you came from. You tell them you're a traveler. Off the top, off the dribble, somebody tells you that they're a traveler, those that are in a position of authority of the masjid, you should ask them, Do is there anything that we can do for you? Do you need housing? Do you need a place to stay? Right? Some masjid, alhamdulillah, rabbi alami, they allow me to stay in the masjid. Right? This is also a part of the sunnah. In the time of the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, some of the sahabas, they used to stay in the masjid. They used to eat in the masjid. They used to wrestle in the masjid. A lot of things done in the masjid. Today, it's, it's far-fetched. Today, we far from the sunnah. Me and the masjid, you come, and it's locked up. It's not open. Right? We got to get back to the sunnah. So one of the etiquettes as a Muslim, when people come that are traveling, they're visiting, it is the responsibility of the Muslims. This is a fire. Somebody got to do it. 
that we take care of the traveler for three days. Okay? So when he came to this village, the people said, no, nah, we ain't got nothing for you. We ain't got no food for you. We ain't got no water for you. Right? We ain't got no housing for you. Right? So Musa and Islam and Kinder, they went about their way and were told that they came across a wall. There was a wall and it was leaning. It was damaged. It was on the verge of collapsing. So we're told that Kinder fixed the wall. We're told that Kinder fixed the wall. And we're told the top seer that with the guards to how Kinder fixed the wall, we're told that he just touched it, raising his hand up. Whether it was with the, the palm of his hand, the back of his hand, he said he, he raised his hand up, right, on the wall, and it straightened up and was fixed. So this was a miracle from Kinder. He fixed the wall without any effort. What did Musa al Salam say? He said, man, you could have got paid for that. You could have got wages for that. Man, these people, they didn't offer us no food, no water, no nothing. But yet you fixed this wall for free. Man, you could have got paid for that. So what did Kinder say? Hey, this is the party between me and you. This is where we part. You asking too many questions. I told you don't ask me no questions. You still asking questions. But well, this is where we part. Right? He said, but now I'm going to give you the interpretation of the things in which you couldn't have or couldn't bear any patience. So inshallah, this is where we're going to go. This is where we're going to start at right now. And we start from verses uh, 79 through 82. Chapter 18, verses 79 through 82. So now Kinder said, I'm going to give you the top seer. I'm going to give you the explanation as to the things of why I did what I did. Why I did what I did at the boat. Why I did what I did when I killed the boy. Why I did what I did right when I fixed that wall. Because remember, Allah blessed me with knowledge that you don't have. And again, remember, this is a lesson for us that certain people that have knowledge, understanding, wisdom, right? They've been there, they've done that. You don't understand why they're doing what they're doing. Well, how come he did it like that? Well, how come she did it like that? It may be that they have some type of understanding or knowledge that the next person doesn't have. Okay? So this is where we're continuing. Verse 79. Allah states that Kinder said, As for the boat, as for the boat, why I damaged it, it belonged to a poor people working on the sea. We're told that the boat that Kinder came across these were orphans that owned the boat, right? These were poor people working on the sea. So I wished to make a deceptive damage in it as there was a king behind him who seized every boat by force. He said there was poor people that owned this boat and I wanted to damage the boat or make it defective because there was a king that was out there on the sea, and he was seizing, collecting, and taking all the boats by force. So if there was a defectiveness, or there was something, a defect in the boat, the king wouldn't want this boat. Got a hole in it, right? So I wanted the orphans to keep their boat, to keep their livelihood. So thus, this is why I did what I did. You didn't understand why I did what I did, but I had knowledge that you had no knowledge of. Right? This is why I did what I did. Right? So again, we're going through the boat. Remember when Kinder put the hole in the boat? He took the board out of the boat. Musa al Salam thought he was trying to drown the people. But Kinder told him, nah, this boat belonged to poor orphans. Right? And I wanted to put a defect in the boat because there was a king that was taking boats by force. There was a king that was traveling on the sea. In any boat that he came across, he would seize the boat. He would take the boat by force. And these orphans, I wanted them to keep their livelihood. Right? I wanted them to keep their money. Right? They were poor. So I put a, I put a defect in the boat so that when the king came, he seen the boat. It was defective. He wouldn't want to take this boat. Right? Alhamdulillah, whatever that means. Verse 8. As for the boy. Right? Why I killed the boy? I'm going to tell you why I killed the boy. As for the boy that was killed, his parents were believers. Allah said that his parents were mu'minayn. They were two believing parents. And we feared 
we feared that he would oppress them by oppression and transgressing the bounds and with kufr. We feared that the boy would oppress them with oppressions of Tukhyana and kufr, transgressing the bounds with them and kufr disbelief. So we intended that we exchange for them one better than him in righteousness and nearer to mercy or one that was filled with mercy. So Kinder said, with regards to this boy that I killed, his parents were two believing Muslims. They were believers. They were mu'mins, right? And he said that this boy, we're told to the top seer, that the boy was a disbeliever from birth. The boy was a disbeliever from birth. When he was born, the parents were very happy about this child. He was handsome. He was pretty, right? All of that. So the parents, they were very happy when they had this boy. But the boy was very bad. Right? He was a disbeliever. Right? He transgressed the bounds. And we're told that the top seer that Allah feared that because of the love of the parents of this child, this child would take them into kufr. This child would make them do things that they weren't supposed to do. Remember Allah Subhanahu said, your life, your money, your children, your wife, they could be a fitna for you. They could be a trial and tribulation for you. In another narration it said, they could be an enemy for you. So we're told with regard to the story, with regard to this child, that Allah feared that this child would take the husband and the wife into kufr out of love for this child. And we got to take a lesson from this. Right? Saying that this child, because he was handsome, he was beautiful, the parents loved him, but yet he was very bad. He was very wicked. So Allah Ta'ala said that we feared that this child would take the parents into kufr. Right? Because of the love of this child. So Allah Ta'ala said that we wish to exchange him for a better child, a more righteous child, and one that was filled with mercy. Alhamdulillah, So we're told that Allah SWT sent Kinder to kill this child. Perchance, because the parents, you know what I'm saying, they would have been inclined to do sin by their love for this child so much, they wouldn't care about all of the bad things that he did. He was wicked. He was a disbeliever. He didn't listen. He transgressed the bounds. Right? He was oppressive. But Allah SWT feared that the parents... Because of their love of this child would fall into kufr. They would compromise their deen. Right? They would sell out their deen for this child. So Allah SWT sent Kither to kill this child. Right? A lot of us, or a lot of parents today, right, they don't care what their child does. Right? They'll stick up for that child. They'll go to bat for that child. Even though the child is wicked. Right? But Allah SWT gives us an example of Kither and his child with regards to Allah killing a child out of fear that the parents would fall into kufr and disbelief because of this child. And Allah Ta'ala said, perchance I will replace him with something better, one more righteous and one filled with mercy. So this is why Kither killed that child. Verse 82. As for the wall, it belonged to two orphan boys in the town. Remember the wall that Kinder fixed the wall. It was on the verge of collapsing. But Kinder fixed it without any wages. Musa he didn't understand why did you fix this wall? So Allah said with regard to this wall it belonged to two orphan boys in the town and there was under it a treasure belonging to them. There was a treasure Right? There was wealth, there was gold, there was silver underneath this wall. Right? And it was on the verge of collapsing, and Allah feared that if this wall would have collapsed, the people would have found the gold and took it from these orphans. Right? So he said this wall belonged to two orphans, and underneath this wall, there was gold, there was silver, there was a treasure. And Allah spoke of fear that if this wall collapsed, that the people in the town would have found this gold, they would have found this treasure, and those orphans wouldn't have got that money. So Allah Ta'ala said, and their father was a righteous man. This is very important. And their father was a righteous man, and your Lord intended that they should obtain the age of full strength 
and take out of the treasure and take out of the treasure as a mercy from your Lord. I didn't do any of this on my own accord. And this is the interpretation of the things in which you could not bear or be patient with. So we're told that underneath this wall, there was a treasure of two orphans. Bitterloch must have said that their father was a righteous man. Right? And we're told in the top seer, but it goes to the righteousness of the father. Right? We have other hadith, but it goes to the righteousness of one person. It can trickle down to your children. One of the salaf, and I can't remember what, what, what sahaba or what salaf this was, but it's a sahih hadith. But it goes to one of the salaf, he had a conversation with his son. And he said, son, do you know why I increase in my good deeds? Do you know why I go far and beyond in what it is that I do? Right? The son said, no, why? He said, because the ajr, the reward, the blessings that I do trickles down to my family. It trickles down to my kids. So my intent, my hope, is that with my good deeds, that Allah will bestow his mercy upon my children. Remember Allah said that with regards to a person that makes it to the Jannah, right? And all the family members that make it to the Jannah. We're told that whoever makes it the highest part in the Jannah, then he'll be able to bring all of his family members with him to that highest part. So you want to go to the highest part possible for you and your family members. It's not just for you, it's for your family members as well. Right? Allah Ta'ala said that you'll be there, your wives will be there, your children will be there. Right? And Allah tells us with the God in his ayah that their father was a righteous person. So because of the du'a of their father, the righteousness of their father, the good deeds of their good father, and we're also told that the children of orphans, they were righteous as well. But because of the righteousness of their father, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to protect them and their money. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent kinder out of the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect their money and, he, and he, uh, he fixed the wall. And at the end of this, he said, I did none of this of my own accord. I didn't do this by my own accord. This is by the rahmah of Allah. This is by the knowledge of Allah. This is by the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are the things that I did in which you could not bear, you could not have patience with. Alhamdulillah, what Okay? So this is the story of Kidr. These are some of the things that happened with the gospel, the journey of Kidr. Okay? Going again from the beginning, Alhamdulillah, what We learned that the story of Kidr was the teachers that all knowledge comes from Allah. Remember the hadith? Right? With the gospel, to Musa, alayhi salam, and Kidr, they was on the sea. And there was a sparrow that dipped his beak in the ocean. And Kinder said, do you not see how much water, right, that sparrow took up out of the ocean? How much did it decrease from the ocean? He said, that is the, that is the amount of knowledge that mankind takes away from the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not take away from any other knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah blesses everybody with knowledge of all the knowledge of the people on earth. It doesn't take away from the knowledge of Allah, just like that sparrow when he dipped his beak in the water in the ocean, and that which came out of the ocean, and that which was taken away from the ocean, that's how much we take away from the knowledge of Allah. It's nothing. Okay? So we understand from the story that all knowledge comes from Allah. Right? One of the names of Allah, al Ali, the possessor of all knowledge. Remember Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said by Ibn Abbas, ready la an. He said there was a person that has knowledge, but then there's another person that has more knowledge than him. Then there's another person that has more knowledge than him. And then it goes all the way back to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because all knowledge comes from Allah. So we can never get above ourselves. Right? We can never get arrogant or too complacent with ourselves with regards to our knowledge. And we learn from Musa alayhi salam, he thought he had all of the knowledge. But Allah proved to him and showed him that somebody had more knowledge than him. This is how the story of Kidda came. Alhamdulillah, what does that mean? Okay? And so Allah said that Musa, Musa alayhi salam, he wanted to be Kidda. Right? So Allah told him what to do. Take a live fish. Right? And wherever the fish leaves you, this is where you find the man. Right? We're told uh, with the gods too, they started on this journey. 
the boy that was on the journey when Musa alayhi salam was Joshua. Okay? And so him and Joshua traveled to go find Kidron. Right? We're told that Musa alayhi salam, he made a statement, it doesn't matter, it takes me 70 years, 80 years, a lifetime, till I meet this man, I'm going to continue on this path. Why? To gain some knowledge. To get some knowledge from somebody that has more knowledge than me. Inshallah. And that should be the inspiration of the lesson. Man, gain knowledge, man. Go get it. Right? And we're told that they came to a spot. And at the spot, there was a spring of life, Ayon Hayat. Right? They went to sleep. Some of the water sprinkled on the fish while they were asleep. And the fish came alive. We're told the fish jumped out of the basket, jumped up out of the vessel, and started swimming. Right? Looked like a tunnel. In the sea, looked like a tunnel and the water. This was a miracle. They woke up. Right? Alhamdulillah, Musa alayhi salam said, Man, we're hungry. We're exhausted. Go get the food. Right? Joshua said, Oh, man, I forgot to tell you. The fish took off. Man, it went into the ocean. It was only shaitan that made me forget. Musa alayhi salam said, Oh, this is what we've been looking for. Let's go retract our, retract our footsteps. Let's go back to where we came from. And they found Kidron. Right? When they found Kidr, we're told that Musa alayhi salam, he asked Kidr permission. May I follow you? May I walk with you? I want to get this knowledge that you have that I don't have. Can I get that? Right? Kidr said, yeah, you can come with me, but you will never be able to be patient or endure what it is that you see with me. Lani. Right? Musa alayhi salam said, okay, man, but I still want to go with you. I promise I won't ask you no questions, and I'll obey you in anything that you tell me to do. Alhamdulillah, I So they started on their journey. They had a deal. They came to a boat. What happened? Kidder took one of the boys out of the boat, right? Made the boat defective. Right? Musa alayhi salam, he didn't understand. Right? Man, why'd you do this? He said, man, didn't I tell you don't ask me no questions? He said, oh, I forgot. Right? Okay. Boom. They continued on their trip. What happened next? They came to a group of boys. Right? What happened? Kidder killed one of the boys. Popped his head off, right? Took his head off, killed him. What did Musa alayhi salam say? Man, you did an evil thing. You did some moon call. Man, you killed somebody without just cause. What did Kidder say? Man, did not tell you, don't ask me nothing. Did not tell you that you wouldn't be able to bear what it is that you see with me. Musa alayhi salam said, you're right. And you know what? If I ask you anything else, then man, you can tell me to depart. Right? Okay, they continued on their trip. Then they came to a wall. They came to a village. When they came to this village, they came to this town, right? They asked the people for food, water, or shelter. The people denied it, right? Now we ain't gonna give you nothing. We're told that they were, uh, you know, they were miserly, they were stingy, right? And even though these people were stingy, miserly, we're told that they came to a wall and the kids are fixed the wall. We're told that he touched the wall, touched it going upwards, and the wall straightened up and was fixed. Musa alayhi salam again, asking questions. Man, what you do that for? You could have got paid for that. You could have got wages for that. Right? And Musa alayhi salam said, Musa alayhi salam, because he asked another question. Kidder said, oh, this is where we part. This is our parting place. Told you don't ask me no questions. You still asking questions, so it's time for me to let you go. But before I do, I'm going to give you the interpretation for the going through the things that you couldn't bear. Now we're told in the hadith that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, May Allah bestow mercy upon Musa alayhi salam. May Allah bestow mercy upon Musa alayhi salam. We wish that he would have been more patient. If only Musa alayhi salam would have been more patient, we could have learned more about the story. Right? But because Musa alayhi salam said to Kidder, he made a prerequisite, if I ask you anything else, then man, you can make me leave your companionship. And that's what happened. Okay, so now Kidder said, I'm going to give you the interpretation of what it is that we talked about. He said, with regard to the boat, right, the boat belonged to some poor orphans. The boat belonged to the poor orphans, and there was a king that would take it on the boats by force. He said, so I'm going to put a defect in the boat so that the king would not take the boat from these people, and they can retain their livelihood. They can still make money. This is why I did that with the boat. With regard to the killing of the boy, we're told that the young boy was a disbeliever and Allah feared that the parents would fall into kufr because of the boy. And remember Allah said that your wives and your children could be a fitna for you 
your wives and your children could be an enemy for you. So Allah tells us in this ayah that your children, they can take you to the hellfire. Some of your children, because of their wickedness, because of their evilness, because it's already decreed that they're disbelievers, it's decreed that they won't... Uh, that they're going to the hellfire, but yet we still want to hold on to them. We still want to try to save them. We still want to look past these things. We want to be naive. These children can take you to the hellfire. Allah said your wives, your children can be a fit enough for you. They can make you compromise this deed. In another ayah, Allah said that your wives and your children, they can be an enemy for you. An enemy. Right? Just like here, Allah said he feared that their parents would fall into kufr because of the boy. They loved him so much that they was willing to go into kufr because they didn't want to, they wanted to be naive with the reality that this boy was wicked. He was bad. He's headed to the hellfire. They were supposed to let him go. Right? But they wouldn't let him go. So Allah Allah sent Kither to kill the boy, perchance that Allah would exchange him. For a better child, one that was more righteous and had more rahmah about himself, more mercy, more caring. Alhamdulillah, whatever that means. There's a lesson in that. Then with the go to the wall, we're told that Kidder said that this wall, it belonged to two orphans. And underneath this wall, there was a treasure. Whether it was gold, whether it was silver, it was a major treasure. And Allah said that their father was a righteous father. He was righteous. And again, showing that the deeds of the righteous go down to the kids. Right? When you do certain deeds, it's not just for you, it's for your kids. Just like the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, we learned in one of the other classes with the God of Shafa'ah, with the God of intercession. The Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, anyone that learns the Quran and teaches it to others, they'll be able to intercede for 10 people in their family. So you might have a person that learns the Quran and he takes it upon himself or she takes it upon herself to teach the people because they want to intercede for 10 people in their family. Right? So they're doing a good deed for not just for them, but for their family. What was the other hadith we learned about the Shaheed? The one that dies Shaheed. The one that dies in the cause of Allah. They'll be able to intercede for 72 people members, 72 members of their family. 72 members or 72 people. So that person, they're putting their life on the line for the cause of Allah, willing to die on the cause of Allah. They're not just doing it for themselves. They're doing it because they know that they'll be able to intercede for 72 members of their family. So I'm not just doing it for me. I'm doing it for my family. Those who might have defects. Okay? And again, remember what Allah Allah said, and whenever, whoever reaches the highest part in the Jannah, out of your family, right? Whoever amongst your family members reaches the highest part. Whatever the highest part that one of the family members reaches, that's where all the family members will go. Right? So we want to, you know, we want to root or we want to, you know, we want to urge or encourage people to do good deeds. Right? Man, get that best deed. Get that. Get that shahada. Right? Teach that deed. Right? Because again, the deeds of the righteous go down to the kids, go down to the family members, go down to the wives. Right? So we want to do good deeds. So Allah said that their father was a righteous man and Allah wanted them to obtain their treasure. He wanted them to reach the age of maturity and strength so that they can get their treasure up out of there. They didn't want the people to find that treasure. If the wall fell down, the people might have found that treasure. So Allah wanted them to reach an age of maturity, of strength, so that they can obtain their treasure. And this is from the Rahmah of Allah. And Kinder said, I did not do this of my own accord. This, I didn't do this from my own nafs. Right? This is from the commandment of Allah, for the law. This is because Allah, for the law, told me to do it. From the knowledge that Allah, for the law, gave me. Again, the whole emphasis of the story, because Musa, alayhi salam, thought that he had the most knowledge. And Allah showed him that there's always somebody that has more knowledge than you. Allah could choose somebody. He may not even be a prophet. He may not even be somebody in a high standard, but Allah blesses them with knowledge and understanding. Right? That's why we can never be uh, uh, too arrogant or too high and mighty because there might be somebody that comes to us or comes in our presence. Allah blesses them with knowledge that we don't understand. 
just because they may look different, just because they come from a different locality, just because they don't have no PhD degree, that don't mean nothing. Allah gives knowledge to whom he pleases. Allah gives understanding.